Hi, Ashley. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Hope you're doing well this morning. Hopefully it's a sunny day out there. Are you in California right now? Is that where you're at? Um, yes, I'm in, yeah, Northern California, like right outside of Sacramento. And it is, it's pretty sunny. <laughs> awesome. Hopefully not too much rain ever happens in California. Although I know there's parts that are pretty, pretty rainy, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm North. So we get, we kind of get all the seasons, which is why I absolutely love where I'm from. But so not raining yet. I heard some rain tomorrow, but we'll see. <laughs> I was, I live in Chicago and we get all four seasons, of course, there because we're right in the middle of the whole thing, right? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, uh, I do enjoy the four seasons and I think that as much as I love California and Florida, I think I'd always feel like I was on vacation. I don't think I would ever get anything done. So yeah. that's why I kind of <laughs> like where I'm at in Chicago, so. Um, yeah, I feel it. I want to take a second to interview in, introduce you to our uh, future audience that will be watching this video. Yeah. Um, so this is Ashley Barron and, um, singer songwriter of country music and i'm sure other genres as life evolves you never know what genre but we, this is where you're at right now in the world of country music smack dab in the middle yes. of country music and uh yes. her current single let me go is sure to take off like wildfire as uh, people hear it so i just want to thank you so much for joining me today yeah of course thank you for having me this is fun so i'm going to kind of go all the way back to the beginning a little bit and just okay. ask you you know how far back do you go in your life when you can remember a memory of music? Something the first time that you could think of music being a part of your life? Oh man. Um, actually that like comes pretty vivid to me. Uh, my family is huge on music. I was raised on, you know, old school country, um, to modern country, to a lot of old school rock and roll to modern rock. So we're kind of all over the board there. Um, but, we also take a family houseboating trip every single year since they've been doing it since before I was born. And um, we go to Lake Shasta and every time we're there, all I can remember is just music is always blaring, always playing, always in the background, something. And the one person I hear in particular, like artist wise is Tim McGraw, his old school stuff. We used to listen to that constantly. Right, and I know that you, if you had to pick a favorite song, I believe it kind of goes towards the Tim McGraw song, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, what is that? Oh my gosh, oh, something, something like that, yeah. Something, I knew it was something, something, I couldn't remember that, yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. That, I know that that's one of the songs that you quoted as being a, a favorite song. You know? Yes, that is my hands down over every song, all throughout the years, since I was like that young, since I was like three or four years old, whenever it came out, I swear it's been my favorite song since. <laughs> that's so awesome, so awesome. Yeah. Um, can you pin, uh, pinpoint a specific moment when you decided that you were going to make music your career? Yeah, um, I so started in junior high. I uh, finally like joined the choir and started going that route and did that in high school a little bit. But then I actually found a voice coach um, in high school who he used to be in the music industry. He was a lot more. He did um, kind of modern rock. He was, you know, that he was signed to the Quincy Jones label way oh. back in the day. Yeah. And um, anyways, he was great. And he always told me he wanted to get back into recording. And it was always my dream. I always wanted to be a performer. I always wanted to be an artist, but I never knew how that would like ever be possible. And so when I was starting to go to college, I was supposed to go to the University of Arizona. And he asked, he was like, would you want to stay and record an album? And so my dad really helped me make that decision. And he said, you know, the only thing we regret in life is the things we don't do. And he's what he does in his business is his passion. And so he's always, you know, driven me towards following my passion. And so when he asked me if I wanted to record an album, I was like, okay, dream come true. I'm going to apply to Sac State and stay in town. So yeah. that's fantastic. I was going to ask you about that. I know that you had that crossroads about going to the school or not going to college or not. And that yeah. they, you were kind of invited to university and then they were, you had to decide. Um, yeah. It sounds like you had the support to, to, to go on and, and do that. Was there anybody, though, in your circle of family and friends that kind of said, uh, actually, I don't know, you know, school and you got school is important, that piece of paper. I mean, did anybody try to talk you out of it at all? No, not really. Um, I think it was more of, you know, people in our community were kind of like, uh, like to my parents too, like, what are you letting your child do? Like, you're not pushing school, you know, kind of thing. And, and then I think over the years, people started to be like, okay, okay, I see, I see what she's doing. So I didn't really ever have anybody be like, you're crazy kind of thing. So that was always good. 
that's that's it's it's very helpful when you have the overall support of people to, to yes. move forward. They saw you performing locally and they knew your they knew your talent. So I think it was probably a pretty easy decision for them to say you go for it. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they saw what you were doing and they and they believed it. I I teach some music lessons myself. You know, and it's always a crossroads to tell my students the ones that really want to uh, you know go and pursue Broadway. Sometimes I do a lot of theater work with them or Broadway or any kind of you know. So it's always been Broadway, I guess. Uh, pursuing and it's always hard to you want to talk them into it you want to say you chase it but as you and I both know it's a difficult road it's it's a lot of it's a lot it's not as glamorous as people might yeah. think watching you know yeah yeah definitely and I think that without that support system I couldn't even imagine trying to do something like this and not have those people around you because it is it is dog eat dog world out there <laughs> so yeah. you, you definitely need those people around you Right, right. So I always try to, you know, just have them think of all sides. I never discourage them. I never do. I just yeah. always tell them, you know, have a plan B and a plan C. And sometimes when I talk to people, they say, you know what, I don't have a plan B. This is it. And I said, well, then if this is this important, and I get that, I get that too. That's exciting too. You know, yeah. but just to be able to think about things and all of that. And, but uh, it's, yeah. it's always fun to see their journeys and to inspire them and to see people like yourself living your dream out. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, how was it that you specifically decided to pursue country music? How did that come about, that that was the genre that you ended up chasing? I think that really honestly just came naturally. Um, I, like I said, I was raised on it and I was raised on it from the old school all the way, you know, to, to today's country. And it, yeah, it really just came naturally. It's always what I gravitated towards, even when it wasn't cool in junior high to love country music. I remember that <laughs> specifically. And I just, yeah, there was really no other option for me. I mean, I love every other genre, but I think that my voice and my tone and my, my writing resonates with country music more. Do you find that even the style of country music, as far as the style of a, writing a song, they're always story songs. Not that rock and roll songs don't tell a story, but there's always a story behind a good country song, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I always, I thought, you know, I wanted to be um, a little more outlaw country, but it, it is true. Like my writing just shows I'm more storyteller and the things that I go through. So, you know, there's a, a balance there, but yeah. Right, right. Um, so you currently have a single out called Let Me Go. And yeah. I was wondering maybe you could tell us a little bit about that song and how that all came about. Yeah. So actually a trippy story um, of how it kind of came about. So I wrote it two years ago with a couple co-writers. And I remember sitting in the room and when they were talking about this idea, I was like, oh my gosh, like I kind of just really related it to this old ex-boyfriend of mine and um you know we were very on and off and it was just kind of one of those things you know you we no one knew how to like officially let me go you know <laughs> or let us go and um anyways so I kind of made it like fit into my life and then I just knew too when we were writing it like a lot of people can relate to that a lot of there's a lot of different type of breakups out there like not every breakup's the same but there is a lot of similarity in them. And so anyways, when they came to me this year and they wanted to release it, I was like, okay, that's great. Well, I, little did I know, um, my boyfriend and I have three years recently broke up. And when that happened and we started actually recording the music video, my life changed. I was like, oh my gosh, like this, I'm literally living this song right now. Like what, what has happened to my life? Like, especially because I, we didn't think that was going to be our path of, you know, breaking up. We truly thought that we were the ones for each other and yeah. we both felt the same way. And anyways, so it's, it's just crazy to me how I've always wanted my songs to be relatable to other people and to their stories. And I kind of experienced that with myself in my own song. So, you know, kind of just a little dream come true there. <laughs> wow, that's just amazing how that, you know, it just kind of played out that way, unexpected. And yeah, it, totally it, unexpected. At the same time that there was a healing process, I'm sure, in that relationship to, to have to end that relationship, 
it yeah. just, you probably felt like you were stepping outside of yourself for a moment in your lyrics. You're hearing your lyrics say, this yeah. is me. How did this happen? How did this? Yeah. Happen? Yeah. And definitely, it was definitely therapeutic. I mean, I remember when I wrote it, I was like, oh gosh, this just reminds me of him. This is so great. I feel like I'm getting it off my chest. And then as we started this year, two years later, writing the, or um, recording the music video, it was like the same thing. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like truly living this now, you know, in a different form. Like before it was just like, that wasn't really a serious relationship. We were always on and off and like, you know, no one could say goodbye. And then this time it was like, we were incredibly in love and neither of us knew how to say goodbye, but we knew that it wasn't right. And we were kind of just hurting each other. And so it was the, it's the same song, but like two different experiences that I had. So I'm just, I'm hopeful that, you know, my fans feel the same way and they can relate it to some type of their breakup in their life. I, I think that's, that's, that's so important that people can relate to songs. And I, I know that's, that's a really neat trait to have as a songwriter is that you're, you're wanting to write songs. You didn't plan to play that song out in your life, of course, you know, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's neat when you, I mean, other songs that you've written, I'm sure carry, you know, things that are close to your heart that you uh, write about because you want mm -hmm. people to be able to relate to you and to their own life. So, so I mean, that's just really, uh, that's, that's a special thing about songwriting. Um, so I know there's a lyric video out for the song right now. All right, we're back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Something. Okay. Just a moment of Zoom glitch here. It's part yeah. of our, our part of our current world, right? Just having moments when technology doesn't want to cooperate. Yeah. But, it uh, <laughs> um, I know you have a lyric video for the song that's out right now, correct? The lyric video itself yeah. is out. Yeah. Um, and then you're working, like you said, you're working on the music video. There's an actual music video that's in addition to that, I believe. Or right? is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it was funny um, with the lyric video actually so two years ago when i wrote the song um i wanted it to be the first single and so i was just so you know headstrong on making that happen that i recorded an actual music video here in california with that song and my label was kind of like okay do whatever you want but there's no promises you know so it was funny because I was just like, well, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. I want this to be the single. This is what we're doing, like whatever. And um, then of course it was not the first single. And weirdly, I wasn't disappointed. I loved, you know, my last single, Beer in a Bar is one of my favorite songs, especially to perform live. So it worked out and it worked out even better because then we took that music video that I did here and we kind of turned it into the lyric video. So it all came together. <laughs> I thought that was neat. I did notice that, you know, sometimes in lyric videos, people aren't, don't have the luxury of actually being in their, in their own lyric video. Sometimes it's just more images. Yep. I thought it was the perfect yep. blend of you actually in the yep. video and then the images going around and everything. I thought that was really cool how you did that. I, I really enjoyed that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah, it just, yeah, that's awesome. It worked out. Um, and, uh, you know, as I think about this, the fact that, uh, it's a two-year-old song like that. I think it's meant to be your big song because that's sometimes when a song comes back like that, when it comes back in your path, it's something that you had written yeah. and we tend to get attached to songs that we, well, I, okay, I'm an amateur songwriter, so I'm not, I'm saying we, I'm sorry. I'm not out in the <laughs> world like you are doing this, but I mean, no. I, you know, we, I just think about that. I, you know, I get attached to songs that I'm working on at the moment and sometimes great gems from the past get lost in the shuffle. This song sounds like yeah. it's meant to be because it's coming back now to do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that, and that is something I've learned over the years, especially with that, because I was so adamant on making that the first single. And I'm so thankful the way that, you know, God really graced the path for that to come out now, because I couldn't imagine it coming out then, you know, or vice versa or whatnot. And it is, it's funny how those songs we write, we, we do as writers, we're attached. And I think that's why as an artist as well, you know, I have a team of people behind me that really help me see the bigger picture and the overall path for the song. And so it's, it has, it's just all worked out great. 
Well, in the beginning of the interview, I had mentioned that I, I made the comment. I said that, you know, it's, it will take off like wildfire when people hear it. I was genuine about that because, I mean, it sounds like it's very like interview style, you know, it's like wildfire. But I really truly mean that because I, I've listened to it several times, you know, in preparation for our conversation. And it is really very catchy. It's well produced. Your vocals are, are really, really nice. And I, I love it. I, I could hear it on the radio. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was another fun part, too, with the song is so we actually did record it two years ago when we wrote it, um, but we never mastered it. We never really, you know, added all the little, you know, fluffy instruments that we really wanted in it. And so right. it was fun to be able to come back to that two years later and revisit, OK, what do we want to do now? You know, and it's kind of this whole thing, too, like, well, what's popular on the radio and all that stuff. And so that. That was fun because I'm a huge fiddle fan. I love the fiddle. I like love it. I want it in my live band. I want it. I would have it everywhere if I could. Uh -huh. But in, in this song specifically, it really worked out and fit. And so I was glad that everybody saw that and we were really, you know, able to make it present in the song that it is now. So sure. And I, I think it's got to be so cool to hear your song go from. I don't know when you when you compose. Are you at a piano? Are you? Is it in your head? Is it another instrument? Or is it more just kind of just writing down thoughts and humming a melody into a phone? Yeah. Well, it's more because all the all, I. I usually do a lot of co-writes. Rarely do I kind of really write by myself. I, I, when I am writing by myself, it's more just throughout the day. I'm throwing thoughts down on my phone. And if I hear a melody, I will like sing it into my phone kind of thing. Sure. But usually it comes from my co-writers and like what they hear. And then that's when, you know, over the time I start to really hear the other instruments that I could see in the song. Um, and then I just hope my producer agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure it has to be so rewarding, like you said, and so neat that, you know, you know the beginnings of the song. You remember sitting down with your, the co-writers and writing it just, you know, maybe when, when they were writing with you, maybe they had a guitar or a piano or something like that, but not all full blown instruments. And to hear how it evolved, yeah. it got, you got your fiddle, you got your way with the fiddle, you got to have that happen and to hear it fill out, right? To hear the song fill yeah. out its humble beginnings. Right? Yeah, it's it's super rewarding and it's fun and you know the experience of it evolving and every song evolving you know even and just like it coming evolving over years it's really it's awesome to watch and sit back and be like wow okay <laughs> that's yeah. cool yeah so you have plans with the regular videos the video done the, the non-lyric video the regular music video is that finished and ready to go yes yes i am so so excited because another you know God thing that just happened with releasing this song later is I got the opportunity to um, record the actual music video with um, Jimmy Lynch from Rascal 3 Creative and it was huge stepping stone in my career and honor to you know that he wanted to even work with me it was really really awesome so we did we recorded that video um, uh, in September I'm like, what month is it now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we recorded it all in September. Um, I was able to get back to Nashville um, and hang out there for a little bit. And then I was also what was so fun too about it is I was able to fly my sister, who is my hairstylist, and her best friend, who is my makeup artist, out to Nashville, and they got to experience the whole thing with me. So it was it was a great time, a fun experience, and working with a huge production team like that was crazy, but so fun. And we do, we have it all wrapped and ready to go now. So I'm just so, so excited for whenever they're gonna tell me it's gonna be released. Right. I don't even know yet, but it's coming soon. <laughs> well, so people who are, watching today make sure you find that video because uh I'm, I'm sure that you know videos always just bring the picture even the lyric video certainly did a great job of that too of course but yeah. now you get to take it even one step further and it just paints the picture of the song you know totally. people that the, the imagery of it all so yeah yeah yes um i know you mentioned your other single that you released earlier this year i think in february i think it was uh sometime in the winter just right before everything kind of just kind of <clears throat> you know, with our current health crisis, you know, things, yeah. uh, beer in a bar, right? Yeah, and yes. I, I love that, I love the lyric, I hope I get this lyric right, I, I, it, he'll last about as long as a beer in a bar, right? Yes. I yeah. love that line, I just love that, I love that, you know, 
I just love the analogy. It's, it's, so, it's yeah. so fun. <laughs> yeah, um, I wrote that with um, a guy named Michael Huffman, and we call him Huff Daddy. And <laughs> he is super, super old school. And that was a fun write because he came into it and he just had this little piece of paper and he writes down all his hooks on it. And so he had beer in a bar as like a hook. And then he started saying that and we all just died laughing. We're like, okay, <laughs> this could be a fun song. I love it. I love it. I love that. And so it kind of built around that line in a sense. And this, yeah, this, pretty yeah. much, pretty much. Yeah. I love that line. I, 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 I laugh every time I, you know, I'm, it's just, it's fun. It's fun. I'm, and I'm trying to, it's a, Again, amateur song where I'm thinking, what other kind of analogies like that in life? It made me just start going crazy with thoughts about like a beer in a bar. How long would a beer last in a bar? Probably about two seconds, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, on a Friday night or something, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a neat analogy and it's fun and the, the music's fun. And I know you said you enjoyed playing it on stage. You yeah. know, it's a fun yeah. bar song or a state small venue song like that, you know, to be singing yeah. with a, a rowdy crowd. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I love, I love performing those up-tempo songs, especially with my band and they'll take the solo sections and just extend it and the crowd goes wild. And it's, those are, those are, you know, the most fun to perform and be, you feel with the crowd, you can feel their energy. And so it's a, it's a fun song. Yeah. That's, and, and looking forward to getting back to that place where we could do some live music again. Yes, yes, definitely. That is where one of my biggest passions, you know, in this whole music industry thing that I'm in, I, if I had to choose like, what was my favorite thing to do, it would definitely be performing live and being on the road and meeting fans. I just, I, I love it. It's almost like a place where, you know, the recording and the studio is great, but when you get on stage, it's like, you don't have any boundaries. You have nothing holding you back. Like just go for it and give it your all. And who cares if you mess up, you mess up. It's part of the show. Like it just, there are, you know, I just, I always lose myself on stage. So I, I miss it so, so much. Well, hopefully fingers crossed, we get back to that, you know, at some point near future, because uh, I know in talking to so many different artists, everyone's anxious to get back on the stage. And that's a big part of it. Like you said, in the studio, it's great. It's fun to see a song come into play. But then to get that direct feedback in person from your audience and your fans, it's got to be yeah. so neat, so rewarding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing like it. And there's nothing like, you know, being able to really create a fan base in that way, that personal way, going and meeting these people and having relationships with them. It's like that, that's what I miss. I'm, I'm definitely an extrovert too. So I'm like, oh, I just want to like meet you and talk to you and, you know, all that stuff. There's, yeah, there's really nothing like it. And we've tried. It's funny. I know so many artists are trying so hard to stay relevant and be online and be yeah. engaging in that way. And yes, we can do it, but there's just, seriously, there's just nothing like being in person. So. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And it's always the, the energy of a live concert, being in the audience and seeing your, your favorite singer, you know, or, you know, just performing like that. It's, the, the rush from that moment of a live audience has to be yeah. you know, on that side. Um, yeah. You know, you talk about country music fans. What do you think that makes them stand out amongst uh, fans of music? I mean, there's fans for every type of music, but country music fans are something yeah. special about them. They're, they're just so chill or they're just so relaxed or fun. They or are, yeah, they're just, they're real. And these are the people that you know are just go looking for like, concert wise to just go and have a good time not care about anything else let go of all the worries in the world and they're just so down to earth and every person i've met is just you know great and that's why and they're they're loyal too they want to you know once they get to know you they want to follow your career and i think that really makes them stand out too you don't have that a lot i mean yes you have all the people that love beyonce and things like that but it's just it's there's something different about them. You know, they just, they're loyal and they want to let loose and have a good time. And that's what I want to bring to them. So it just, it works. And in a current world where there's just so much music to be able to be reached because of the internet, you know, you can yeah. access it on, you know, every, and Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, all the different things and, and all the websites and YouTube and all the social media, there are a lot of choices for people. So it's great that if someone can latch on to what you're doing, that you you want those loyal followers in the world of country music to, you know, say it's it's rare because that someone could have that moment yeah. to to say, okay, I like your music and I'm going to follow you, which is wonderful. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's an honor like to know that somebody really just loves my stuff that much that every time I come out with something new, they're right there ready to get it. Like that's awesome. And then it, it gives me a sense of, I know who I'm speaking to too. You know, I know that it gets so big and vast with all the people, but I still, I still feel that personal connection with my fans. So. Well, just in talking with you, I'm, I'm sure that as people meet you in person and talk to you, they, they feel the energy that I feel at, at talking to you today, that, that, that desire to want to you know, help someone with their career, to follow them, to, to, to encourage their every move, you know, because yeah. it's, it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a journey. Yes. And you need people yeah. behind you like that, fans that, that keep saying, make another record, make another single, play yeah. here, come to my city, that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, talking about the live shows for a second, um, do you have a favorite show memory that you could think of when you were on the stage and either you got to perform with somebody that you've, you know, either regionally or even nas you know, nationally that got to be a part of a bill or something? or just a, just a special show memory? Um, yeah, well, being on the same bill as somebody, um, this is kind of funny, and this was way back when I was still just a local artist in the Sacramento area. I had barely gone to Nashville. I was not signed. I was you know, just trying to do my own thing. I um, got really close with the radio station that was out here, and they had you know, one of the concerts, they were bringing in some people, and they asked me to be a part of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my first, like, okay, I'm going to be on a bill with somebody, you know? Yeah. And it was William Michael Morgan. And what was so awesome about that is till this day, I'll see him around in Nashville and we're like, okay, hey, what's up? Hey, <laughs> you know, and he's was so nice and like made me feel so welcome when I, and, as, and back then when I was nobody, you know, and now seeing him, it's funny, you know, we joke about that, but it's that was that was really fun to be a part of his bill especially like way way back then that's something that's just really stuck with me and i hope that you know i can do that for somebody else too um just being able to embrace new artists especially even when you know when you're bigger or whatever but another funny one that i have is i was on tour last year and we played a fourth of july show in um a town right outside of denver colorado and we were on stage and all of a sudden, and it was outside. It was an outside kind of amphitheater by venue, and which was awesome. And all of a sudden, here come these goats, like <laughs> coming through the crowd in front of the stage. And I literally stopped and I was like, does anyone, are you guys seeing these goats coming down? Like, it was crazy, like out of nowhere. I was like, does this happen in Colorado? Like, what? It was, it was really funny. And they eventually came down to the stage and I was like, and we were so loud, you know, it was a loud stage. I was like shocked that they weren't scared by the noise or something or the people. And everybody was just like, can we touch them? Are they me? Like it was, it was so funny. So that was a great memory. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's kind of like, okay, just like, like you said, you know, does this happen all the time? No one seems to be like even batting an eyelash about it. By it. I was, are they going to come on stage next? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? It was, that was pretty funny. That's a great story. That's, and you, 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 you'll never forget that. You'll yeah. never forget that because it's like, okay, goats. Hmm. Yeah. I was like, cool, meet some new goat fans. That's awesome. <laughs> as long as they didn't interfere with backup vocals or anything with like that, yeah, they didn't start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, is there um, anybody, I know you've mentioned uh, Miranda Lambert in interviews and, and in conversations and on your web pages, a, a big inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anybody in addition to her, or maybe you know, first, let's just ask you this. What is it about Miranda Lambert that you really admire? What is it about her that you, you know, look to on, on her career? Yeah, um, she is so real. She has always been so real and honest with her fans, mm -hmm. through her music, through her interviews, through her social media. She is, she is just real. What you see is what you get. And that's something that I, I want to do too. I want to bring that through my music. I want to bring that when I'm talking to people. Um, I've always kind of been like that. Um, I think it was kind of a crutch, you know, back then because I was very, in high school, I was very harsh and very like, I'm not going to take no crap kind of person. <laughs> um, I think I've softened a little, but that is definitely something I really admire about her just overall is that she is very, very real. 
And I think fans appreciate that kind of thing because, you know, sometimes you, you can feel that an artist puts up a, a facade. Yeah. Between them well, and, the and that goes back to the, you know, what makes, you know, country music fans different um, is that they know in country music, genuinely, we are real. The songs that we're singing are really a part of our life. And that's also just why I love country music and, you know, amongst all the other genres. Sure, sure. Um, is there anybody that you would add to a short list of people that you'd like to either songwrite, even in the, in the songwriting world, people that sometimes don't get the credit for being in front of an audience, but they wrote the song that brings someone that catapults their fame. Anybody like that, that as you wander around Nashville once in a while and that you're like, I want to work with this person. I want to work with that person. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I've I've always had my dreams. I love um, Natalie Hemby, and I know she's, you know, becoming more known and out there. And I think that's something really awesome about today's time is I feel like a lot of those writers who normally it used to be people didn't really know about are starting to come forward and artists are also trying to uplift their writers. And I think that that's really awesome. So a lot of them are, you know, becoming known by the fans now, which I think is awesome. But um, she is definitely one of them. And um, oh my gosh, well, there's just, I mean, there's tons. I mean, every writer I've, you know, met in Nashville, working with Huff Daddy or <laughs> Michael Huffman, uh, that was that was a dream come true too. You know, he wrote a lot of George Strait songs, and so definitely he had that old school country that I was raised on, and was able to bring it out in some of my songs. So right, right. Yeah. Um, so so yes, there, I mean, like I know that people look at Nashville as being a songwriter's haven. But like you said, some of those people now, either they, a lot of people say they, they went there without any intention to be performers, but just yeah. songwriters. And then they got the bug as they started being around it and they became famous singers. Many, many people you hear that story from in Nashville, you know. Oh, totally. Well, I think that's the whole, you know, Chris Stapleton dream too. Is yeah. that's kind of what he did. I mean, I feel like he became an artist because everybody around him was like, dude, you've got a voice, <laughs> like, do something with it, you know, and he was in the steel drivers before that, but still, I think it was different for him to branch out on his own, and I mean, I don't know, I don't think that was his intention either, I think he's a very, very talented songwriter, and was just, you know, able for right. that to come about. I'm going to do a technology fix real fast here, I'm very okay. sorry, I'm just getting yeah, it all right, um, otherwise, my computer would have crashed. I realized my, my, my computer was unplugged here. So technology day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it is so neat to see people live out their dream that they were songwriters that became singers and they're, and they're out there interacting. And before you know it, they're on that, they're on that stage too. So it's kind of fun yeah. to watch those journeys. Yeah. Um, is there anybody that you really, I mean, in addition to Miranda Lambert, because I mean, I think that would probably be the dream show, right? The double bill yeah. with Miranda, um, yeah. that you picture is really good, that would be a really good fit with your style of music, your, your style, your songwriting style, your personality to, to do a double bill or to do an opening um, show for somebody. So something like that. Yeah, I would probably die and have a heart attack if I was able to open for Eric Church. <laughs> I absolutely love him and his music and he worked, he did a song with one of my most favorite hardcore rock artists called um, Hailstorm. And they, that was the best concert ever. I went to that when he came here and he took her, their band on tour. And when I found out they were opening, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I was like, oh my gosh, that is my dream. That is what I want, you know? Um, but definitely him. And then I would also, I would really love to do a show with um, uh, Luke Combs. And I have just recently completely fallen in love with Lauren Elena too. So <laughs> she is really, really all of a sudden very much in the, in the limelight. I mean, I know she's oh been doing gosh, some yeah. things with, I mean, she's been around for a while, of course, but she's yeah. all of a sudden her name is becoming a household name. It yeah, really is. Um, well, and then again, I think, you know, I think she did it right. She started to, she's been through so much stuff in her life and she, her recent EP that she just released is true, real songs about what she went through. And it's, it goes to show when you write real from the heart and what you're actually going through, your fans connect with it more. I mean, I have, I'm like, oh my gosh, this EP, it's fire. So 
yeah, she's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's that's always so great. It's, it is important to be able to relate to the the songwriter. You you see it as a music fan, and then you're you wanting to give it back to your your fans the same way. Yeah. So it's kind of neat to you know how valuable it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Hailstorm. We're talking about Hailstorm for a quick just quick side story here. Um, yeah. I just had an invitation last week to like, let's do go some kind of like an online webcast because they were releasing a vinyl record or something. And I oh, missed really? it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, yeah, some kind of like a, you know, a, a friend of mine in the industry had sent an email and I was like, that sounds so cool because vinyl is, you know, and, and neat for a band like that, that you would think, okay, they're streaming, they're doing all the, all the different things, but to put a physical vinyl piece out for a band that's got a following like that, it's kind of cool too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I definitely need to get my hands on that because I did not know about that, but I love them. They are, that is like my guilty pleasure music is hardcore rock and roll, a little bit of screamo metal. I love that stuff. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. I was actually going to ask you outside the world of country, you know, who are the artists that, that, you know, have influenced you in the world of rock or like you said, screamo, heavy metal, whatever. Name yeah. a couple, throw a couple names out there. A couple of well, names. Yeah. Yeah, Hailstorm would be like the most relevant one. Um, and then I love Nickelback. I was totally a Nickelback girl back, you know, <laughs> in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but then, you know, it goes a lot of old school rock. And um, my dad really graced me with that in my upbringing. Um, we listened to a lot of CCR, a lot of Leonard Skinner, a lot of Almond Brothers, um, guys like that. So. A lot of Southern rock, it sounds like. A lot of yeah. Southern rock bands. and Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, he was a big fan. Yeah. I, as, as a music teacher, I'm always amazed when my students bring in songs from the past and like their parents are really influenced them. So, you know, sometimes kids don't want to, we don't want to listen to our parents' music and stuff, but sometimes we do. I, you know, and I love when they come in with, you know, oh, I want to sing a song from this band or from Queen or from whoever, the, the Stones. They're like, how do you know the Stone? You know, they're 15, yeah. 14, 13. I love the yeah. way that music perpetuates. Totally. And, and that, that's funny. I mean, I can remember too. I totally went through that stage where I was like, oh, country's not cool. Rock's not cool. It's just rap and pop. And I didn't want to listen to anything. My parents and they <laughs> hated my music. You know, we all go through that, but it's right. fun too seeing it. Like we always, I feel like everybody comes back to their roots and what they were raised on and stuff like that. So it'll always, it'll always stay in style. Everything goes full circle, a full cycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, we have the arrow in the background and it was, you know, I just love seeing the arrow. I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, maybe you could tell our, our audience a little bit about the image of an arrow in your life. I, I love it. it's on all of your uh, artwork and in your, you know, your singles and, and, and stills on Facebook or in YouTube. It's in your song titles. I love it. Tell us a little bit about the arrow. Yeah, um, I basically, you know, I look at an arrow and it's kind of like whatever holds you back in life is eventually going to shoot you forward. And that's definitely something I really lived through um, in now my eight years in this music industry is, you know, you think you're going to get dragged down so far, but, you know, if you hold strong and believe in yourself that you are going to propel forward. And that's just kind of, I don't know, just weirdly became my thing. I didn't like purposely be like oh I love arrows like it was kind of just <laughs> natural and and what's funny too is I um I'm a hunter which this is fun but right up there oh. is my deer <laughs> right above me <laughs> um yeah I and so people always ask me they're like oh or do you bow hunt and I have actually never shot a bow in my life so <laughs> um <laughs> it didn't come from that either it just you know it was that whole saying of you know, whatever's gonna pull you back will shoot you forward. I, I, I love it. And I think it's just, it's so neat. And as your career continues to just, the momentum just continues to grow. And, and I just think it's gonna be such a neat thing that's always gonna be, and people are gonna be able to relate to that and say, wow, there's that arrow again. I just, I think they're gonna think it's so cool. I thought it was so cool to see yeah. that. And I think Aww, it's gonna be such you. a neat thing to carry through your career. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad. Um, so I know you spend most of your time in California, you know, not most, but a lot of your time in California and your home, to, you know, home in Sacramento area. How much time do you get to in a, in a time when we're not kind of locked down, like maybe last year thinking about the future, how much time do you get to spend in Nashville itself? So actually I spend a lot more time in Nashville than I do in California. Okay. Um, last year I was on the road a lot. So um, I was kind of, <laughs> 
kind of didn't really have a home. <laughs> it was yeah. really all over the place. It was like, you know, one minute I was in Nashville, then I was touring for radio tour. And then I'd for a split second, come back to California. And then I was back on radio tour. So it was last year was really all over the place. And then, um, this, the beginning of this year kind of started out like that for me, I was on the road a lot and I spent a lot of time January and February in Nashville, um, more than California. And then, yeah, the pandemic hit and unfortunately my mom got sick as well. So it, kind of worked out that I was able to be here and be home. So um, yeah, I've been here, but I have, I have gone, I've gotten back to Nashville um, a couple times in the last few months and hopefully I'll get back to that. Is there a venue in Nashville that you're like, that you see on the, that you see the marquee or you walk by and you're like, and you just know the, the halo around it and you say, I can't wait to play there. I want to play there. Or it's, you know, give me a, if you, if you can, if you can do this, think like, you know, uh, a smaller venue like for more intimate and then give me like the big venue like or the big platform what do you think in yeah. flat Nashville? well i think that's pretty easy and obvious and i think that uh -huh. i'm following <laughs> every country artist you know what says when they say this but small venue the big dream is playing the bluebird cafe yes uh, yeah and then large venue is definitely playing on the stage at bridgestone <laughs> okay okay great great um have, have you seen the documentary uh, bluebird have you seen that yet no i haven't watched the actual documentary i've seen like clips of it but i haven't fully watched the whole thing it's so cool it's really really awesome and as you watch if you get a chance to watch it i think yeah. netflix has it. i borrowed it from the library at some point because it was just the easiest thing and this yeah. you know i didn't i don't i didn't have i know it's hard to believe i was a person that didn't have netflix during quarantine so I think I fixed that now, but, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, I think I just got it from a local library, whatever, watched it. And uh, it is really inspiring. It is so, as when you, if you get the chance to watch it, you'll be so inspired to say, okay, I'll be there soon. I got to get yeah. there. I got to get there. You'll be more determined than ever. Yeah. Um, it's really a neat documentary to see how people, uh, someone like a, a Garth Brooks or something has his songwriter there singing the song with him or Taylor Swift or whoever it was, you know. Uh, singing the song that they wrote for yeah. the artist. And it's just, it almost brings you to tears. Yeah. It, it just really does. It's just so powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so if you could uh, devote 73 minutes, I think it is, of your, of your time on a, on a rainy day or something to throw hey, that in. I've, I've got that time, so I will do that. <laughs> My yeah, weekends are now open. They're not full of shows, so. <laughs> right, right. Enjoy that free time, I guess, while you have it, because, you know, as soon as we get back into, you'll be so busy, and it'll be a good yeah. busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, is there any uh, specific advice that you've ever been given by another artist or a producer, a songwriter, some one of your colleagues that's really stuck with you, that's helped you to get through some of the times when you feel frustrated about, like, where is this? You know, just those, just those moments of doubt, which you know, you, you get over them and you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I I think that what's gotten me through it all is my faith um, and having God with me and knowing that there's a bigger plan. And even if it's not the huge dream I have in my head that I am on the right path and I am doing what I'm you know, supposed to be doing. Um, and it's definitely also what I hear a lot from the people around me is to being able to have that faith to lean on um, to get me through. It's, it's been huge. And you know, to just be real and believe in yourself. And, you know, if you've got the opportunity, then take, take advantage of it and just stay true to yourself. I, I think it's a great message that, that many people who are on the sidelines wanting to try something in the music industry, wanting to get into the career to, to think about because, and, and, yeah. and really in, in anything in life with, with faith, you can move mountains, you know, if you, yeah. you really can, if you really truly have that faith center, yeah. You know, then you're, you don't worry about uh, the small things. Everything becomes small. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Um, so I have a couple questions for you that kind of go along with the lines. They're kind of like the speed round questions, kind of like your, the, your Cosmo questions on your, on your webpage, you know, <laughs> like, you know, the one word answers. I got a few of those. I thought we'd have fun with this. Okay. Um, I don't think any surprise weird questions. I think they'll be pretty easy to answer, but you could, you could, you could choose not to answer them if they're hard to answer, but uh, okay. <laughs> there are kind of speed round questions here. Um, okay. I read that you love to bake. Uh, what's your favorite recipe to make? Ooh, right now I'm into everything pumpkin. 
So okay. I, and that happens this time every year. I do everything pumpkin from the muffins to the pies to everything. I love pumpkin. <laughs> awesome. Uh, favorite comfort food? Oh, um, definitely P.F. Chang's Chinese food. Oh, I like, I like, yes. That is like, and specifically P.F. Chang's. <laughs> I like P.F. Chang's. The lettuce wraps, I've had those. Yeah. Those are really good. Those lettuce yeah. wraps are very delicious. Yeah. Um, uh, favorite non-Christmas movie? I know that you've listed a, a favorite Christmas movie. Uh, you know, that you love Christmas movies. Is there a favorite just mainstream movie that's not a, a holiday movie that you could think of? Mm. I can't think of one specifically, but I love any cowboy-like movie. Okay. <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic, so any of those, like the, um, oh, I'm thinking, like, you know, The Longest Ride or, you know, movies like that. I love those. Okay. Um, one more for you. A favorite concert that maybe you've attended of another artist? <gasps> My Anytime. very first concert when I was, I think, eight years old, I went to a Tim McGraw concert, and... I was throwing a fit and pouting and my sister picked me up and rushed me to the front of the stage and I reached my hand up to Tim McGraw and through all the people he came down and touched my hand. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. So have you, yeah. have you watched, have you watched the hand at all since that moment? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, in COVID, I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, I was, I hated to ask that question because it's COVID time. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that's my little speed round of questions for you. Um, any plans uh, to release a, an EP or a full length in the near future? Yeah, we are. Um, we are definitely going to release a full length album um, soon. We have been, that's been the reason I was um, actually back in Nashville the last couple times is we recorded um, a couple more songs. Uh, now I just got to get back there to finish up the vocals and hopefully get it all packaged because I'm just super excited. I want to get it out there, get it all to you guys. So I'm crossing my fingers for early next year, but we'll see. Yeah, it is kind of hard to decide when the right time is to drop new music because of yeah. the, this, the place we're in. Do you think that possibly another single before that happens to, you know, I mean, you're, I know you're working this single great. Now you have, I mean, this, this single could really have the legs to last for a long time, you know? Yeah. You might yeah. have another single for a long time, but. I know, right? I mean, we'll see. Um, I, we haven't had really any specific talk. I just know that we really want to get the album out there, um, whether that comes with a single as well. Um, I'm not sure, so. I'll just have to surprise y'all. <laughs> well, we're, we, we like surprises in the, in the, as music fans, uh, for certainly. Yeah. Good surprises. <laughs> um, you had mentioned a radio tour, and I had seen, like, a, a I think a little YouTube video of a, of a radio tour you did, some of the, you know, singing in the studio and everything. Was that for Beer in a Bar, or was that for this new single, or what, how long ago was that? Was that, you said, probably back January, February? I think, well, I, I think we have two different radio tour videos up. Um, one, there is one for my very, very first single, which was wrote a song about it. And then there is one for Beer in a Bar as well. And then unfortunately I haven't been able to get on the road for Let Me Go, which makes me so sad because radio tour is really fun. And it is the opportunity you get to kind of like, you do get to see the city a little bit, you know, whatever town you're in, uh, which is different than just touring. Cause yeah. touring you're like, okay, next show, next show, next show. <laughs> but uh, yeah, radio, you kind of get a little downtime in between. So I hope, you know, to get back on the road either for that or my next single, but. And is there, um, a sp I know you do a lot of social media, you have a lot of different platforms. What are the best social media platforms for you to, for people to find you and learn more about your music, hear your music? Yeah, um, definitely Instagram. I'm a lot more active myself on Instagram. Um, and then Facebook would be the next one. Uh, but my handles for both of those are Ashley Barron Official. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like to tell your fans of, and future fans, fans that are now saying, I have to listen to her, I have to hear her music, you yeah. know, what, anything you'd like to tell them about, and you've told them a lot of great things about who you are as a person that you think is, that will help them to be able to relate to your music and anything that you haven't already said. Um, no, I just want to thank them for following along and I hope if they do, you know, relate to a song or just love my music, reach out to me, let me know. I love to hear that feedback and I try my hardest to get back to everybody. So, well, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. I, I, I love the music that I've heard. I, I did go back and hear the other song, uh, I wrote a song about it. I heard, I heard that one too. Uh, and, and I, I'd love going back and seeing some of the different, uh, 
social media that you've had on, on YouTube, some of the different performances, some of the radio shows, and uh, it's mm. it seems like it's all the exciting things in the making for this career of yours. It's, it's very exciting to watch. So yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. This has been great. It's it's my pleasure, and I, I wish you the best of success. As soon as we get out of COVID, looking forward to live music again and and seeing you back on the road. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. All right. Bye -bye.